Well, San Francisco will become a sanctuary city for transgender and gender non-conforming people. The Board of Supervisors voted unanimously to make the declaration last night as many states and cities push to restrict transgender rights. And being an entrepreneur is not easy. It can be even harder for transgender or gender non-conforming business owners. Max Darrow introduces us to the group of people in San Francisco hoping to change that. Devin Burton is a healer, and today they have the keys to one acupuncture clinic in Oakland's Diamond District. But if all goes as planned, so welcome. We're gonna have you on this table over here. They'll get to see patients at clinics in Oakland and in San Francisco. Sinus tension headache. Providing more safe and comfortable spaces for holistic healing, especially for people who are trans and gender non-conforming. I'm trans. I'm black, and so many people in my community need the extra help. Burton hopes to expand their business, and they're on the way to doing that. Burton is a part of a selective cohort of budding trans and queer entrepreneurs that will receive four months of business coaching, mentorship, and ultimately a $10,000 business grant. It's called the Entrepreneurship Accelerator Program, or EAP. San Francisco's transgender district runs it, and the San Francisco Office of Economic and Workforce Development funds it. I've applied to this program so many times before I had a business um, and didn't get in <laughs> because I didn't have a clue. I was just like, I just want to be a part of this community. One where they can sharpen their business acumen, learn from peers, figure out how to best navigate obstacles that trans entrepreneurs often face. We don't always get the grants. We don't. We can't always go into every space because not every space is safe for us. And take home more than just financial support. Um, but one of the benefits is this like overwhelming sense of I'm not alone. My name is Daisy Blaze. I'm the owner of Daisy's Apothecary. She's one of my favorites. <laughs> Program director Sam Favela says the EAP was created out of necessity almost four years ago. Being an entrepreneur in itself just not even being trans, not even being a person of color, it's hard. There's so many barriers that they have to come across and that they don't have access to, and this program here really cut, cuts across all of that. They say the program has proven to be successful as many folks have gone on to open up storefronts, but it's what can't be quantified that is really special. And because they come back, I know that we're doing something right, that they feel safe here, and that, that it makes me also want to come back and do much more. The details of the dreams may differ, but the sentiment remains the same. Like for everyone, they're striving for success, and support is key in finding it. Which is why to Devin, that unstated benefit of the program, the community, the collective strength, is so vital. I think for a lot of black trans people, the idea that they're normal and they're beautiful and that they love is so hard to do when someone's not whispering to them every day, like, you deserve to live right now. On a daily basis, Burton sees and appreciates people for who they are. They'd like to see more of that in the community. I appreciate always the work that people put towards of making spaces more accessible, for making spaces feel a lot more safer. Like, I want to see the effort. I want to see people asking questions. And at the same time, I think there needs to be more. That's why they're driven to expand, to build more collective strength, to provide a place where people feel safe and seen for a moment of peace, being 100% who they are. And the team at the Transgender District hopes to eventually see a contingent of trans and gender non-conforming business owners in the area. However, they say they will cheer on entrepreneurs wherever they end up. And we met one entrepreneur who went through the EAP and found success. They are now in the process of expanding their catering business called Concept Kitchen. It feels really good to know that um, there are other folks like myself that will be able to get an opportunity to expand their business. Yeah, I've been in like the process of like looking at different spaces around San Francisco. So hopefully soon, like uh, maybe this year or next year, early next year, I, I have a space. I'm looking for like a brick and mortar so I can like uh, sell food in there. Well, for more information about the EAP and to watch all of our Pride Month stories, head to our website at kpix.com. And be sure to watch our Pride special, Hope, Love, Pride. That will happen on Parade Day. It starts at 10 a.m. on Sunday, June 30th on our sister station, PixPlus 44 Cable 12, and streaming on our CBS News app.